Hey, this is Adam. Today I'm going to do a video on urethane. What you can do with it. I'm going to pour some urethane. I'm going to mix it, pour it, and basically go through the steps of cleaning out the mold and prepping the stuff, getting it ready. And essentially giving you some kind of an idea of things that you can do with urethane. Now, what I'm using it for today is the, we're making bushings for a guy that uh, mounts a cart on a trailer and a shifter mount bushing for a Mustang. The shifter mount bushing, I'm actually just using the overpour from the trailer cart bushings, so I'm not actually going to pour a full set. But the way I mix it for these other pieces, I end up with a little bit extra, so if I can get a part out of it, I do. the shifter mount bushing. Urethane is extremely useful. It's strong. It resists just about everything. Machine coolant doesn't bother it. Oil doesn't bother it. Heat doesn't really bother it. I don't know what the temperature max or minimum is, but I know we use it in harsh environments like inside an engine compartment on motor mounts. Um, it, it's incredible. It really is. And I'm not going to stand here and try and tell you that the way I do this is the way to do it. I want to make that really clear. I've been doing this for a while. We've poured thousands of bushings, but I don't have any formal training. I just basically figured it out as it was going along. There wasn't really anybody out there when I first started trying to do this stuff that could explain how it was done. So that's one of the reasons why I'm putting the video up because I know what I went through trying to figure out how to do it, and I think it's a really useful material, and I'd like to see people using it. So, anyway, number one, preparation. Absolutely number one. Get everything ready before you, especially before you start trying to mix anything and, and pour anything. Make sure your molds are clean. Make sure you've got whatever materials you're gonna use handy don't start mixing urethane until you're ready to pour it because if you do it'll start curing on you and you won't be able to pour it fast enough and you end up making mistakes and basically end up with scrap parts so compressed air you know having an air compressor very very useful uh, you could do it without it I'm sure but uh, I would definitely say that it's worth having a compressor around if you can because it makes cleanup and, and preparation and everything much, much easier. Pull the molds out. Now these molds are already fairly clean before I started. I already got a mixing cup, put it on the scale. Zero the scale out, so that's ready. Got my mold release here, it's called Poly's 2300. Shake it up. Don't go crazy with it, you don't need very much. Just definitely want to make sure that every surface has got mold release on it, because I can tell you, especially with aluminum, which is most of what I have experience with. If you put two pieces of aluminum together with urethane and you don't have mold release on it, they're not coming apart. Not easily anyway. You may be able to heat it up and get them apart, but I'll tell you what, if you need to stick two pieces of aluminum together, use urethane. All right, so it's two parts A and one part B, and then I use about two tenths of an ounce of black dye. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that going right now. Always pour A first, because B is the hardener, so buy yourself as much time as you can. So I need 20 ounces, so that's one pound, four ounces. Just, that's just the way this scale reads.
always wipe this stuff off too because it just gets really nasty if you don't. If you leave it, the bottles end up getting sticky and it's just a mess. Alright, so that's part A. Then you put your dye in. And mix it. That way, again, you're buying time. You start mixing the stuff before you put a hardener in it. You've got less mixing to do once the clock starts ticking because you really only have about 15 minutes to do whatever you're going to do with this stuff. Now, this particular urethane is called uh, 75 80. It's an RTV 75 80. Um, it's, it's approximately an 80 durometer, which I found is really good for a lot of different things. Motor mounts, uh, even suspension parts, we've used them for control arm bushings. Now, if you're going to do a lot of something, you probably want to have somebody like Prothane or Energy do your production. This, if you had to do thousands of these, probably want to shoot yourself. But for prototyping and short runs, it's great. Alright, so put that back on the scale, leave the mixer in it, and just tear the scale again. Now I need 10 ounces of B. see the scale but I want a little heavy on the B which means I, I mean I only went over by a couple of tenths but that means it's going to want to harden a little faster so I'm going to have to get a move on here. You need to mix it for about a minute and scrape the sides and stuff you get it as, as much as you can from every part of the cup. I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see because I can't see what the camera can see right now. I'm hoping that the audio is decent because I'm trying a wireless setup here. I've never used it before. Now, if you got to have something that looks really good, you might want to put it in vacuum to degas it. There's sometimes we do that. In this particular case, we don't need to. That should be good. I'm gonna drop this in one of the mold cavities for right now. I'm gonna set this down for a second. As I was telling you how important it is to have everything ready, I didn't get this ready. So, I need to practice what I preach. Okay, now it's ready. Everything lined up. And it, you can already feel it beating up a little bit, which means it's curing. I actually leave the top part of the mold off to pour the majority of the material, and then I put the top on. Makes it a whole lot faster than trying to pour the whole thing through the small holes that we have to use.
for a second, put the bolt pieces on. Gotta try to drop them straight down. If you try to move it front to back, it'll end up sloshing somehow. It's really kind of best to just let it float down itself. And that one spilled over some. Might have had a little too much in there, which is fine. A little bit of overspill is really not a bad problem. I'd rather have it over than under. For some reason I of course seem to do better with this when I don't have a camera on. It must be the pressure of energy. Okay, those are full. Let's get these filled. Now I don't know of exactly what anybody want to use this stuff for, but I'd be really interested to know, so if you do take up a project with this stuff, I'd love to hear about it. I always like seeing and hearing what people do, what they make and what they come up with. It's amazing how innovative people can be, especially machines i found. I don't know what it is, probably just being around machinery all the time. Some of the coolest innovations I've ever seen came from guys that just had an idea and started making it. You can make household items. Definitely marine stuff, like boat stuff. Properties are absolutely great for something like that. Zero corrosion issues. Super strong. the reverse 
mirror's image of whatever you put in it, that mold. That's it. It's definitely a little messy. So don't wear your good clothes when you're going to do your thing, that's for damn sure. But like I said, it's an incredible material. You can make so many different things with it. So I'll be interested to hear from whoever watches this video. Get yourself some urethane and make some stuff. I want to see it. I'm just going to let the excess pour out into an empty spot of that mold. Any questions or comments, post them. I'll reply to them as soon as I can. Uh, YouTube channel name is Lorimore. That's L-O-U-R-A-M-O-R-E. My name's Adam. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. Take care.